from Vegas. Dre Jose Pedraza said in terms of taking this fight, the two-week turnaround, the catch weight now higher at 144. Yeah, it can be considered a risk, but he thinks he will adapt well to the weight. Feels late here is strong, but he said, I'm faster, and you combine that with my skill and agility, and that will be the key to victory. I agree, Joe. That, that should be the case. You're, you're looking at a fighter in Jose Pedraza who's fought 67 world championship rounds. Le Pierre's only fought 12. And Pedraza has a lot more experience than Le Pierre, taking nothing away from Le Pierre. But Pedraza, if he wants to keep his title shot alive and his name at the forefront of the sport, he's got to not only win tonight, but be impressive. So Tim Dre brings up the experience edge for Pedraza at the highest level. The 12 rounds that he references for Le Pierre, that is when he fought Maurice Hooker, March of 2019 for the WBC junior welterweight belt. And he was rocked and cut in the fifth round. He was knocked down with a left hook in the ninth round. Wide margins for the unanimous decision win for Hooker that night. Yeah, but he gains experience from that. Le Pierre, you know, and he's taking that experience that he gained in that fight into him right now. Uppercut left hand from Pedraza. I love the punch, the punch choices, the punch selection coming from Pedraza. He's coming from different angles. He's confusing LaPierre in there. And LaPierre is, is a hard guy to hit. You know, he's very he's a slick fighter. You know, he moves his head often. But there you see right there, Pierre pushes off and attacks and comes forward, trying to close the distance. Work rate from Pedraza here in round number one. Natural right-hander who, as you see, switches constantly. Pedraza's doing the right thing. He's coming out and he's letting Le Pierre know that I'm the boss, I'm the guy with more experience, and you're a good fighter, but I'm a better fighter. And that's the kind of presence you want to have if you're Jose Pedraza in this first round. See blood coming from the nose of Le Pierre. <laughs> you know. Meanwhile, in that first round, Tim, Jose Pedraza landed 11 power punches against Nick Le Pierre. Yeah, the variation of the punches, the punch selections, is what I'm talking about. And here you see Pedraza comes around with the right hook right there inside the pocket. But then you see him weave and get his head back off the line, which confused LaPierre. And then he caught him with a couple of more combinations right there in that sequence. Great work, great offense, great creativity from Jose Pedraza. Talks about the extra weight that Pedraza has to deal with in Le Pierre, and to me, Jose Pedraza looks like the bigger man right now. Physically. He's coming for that. Come on, man. He's coming, he's coming. Oh. See, a lot of people don't understand that movement of Pedraza and what he's doing. You know, he's making himself hard to be timed. You know, it's hard for Le Pierre to time on the shots. And then when Le Pierre sits right there in front, what do you see? Pedraza now working combination to the head. Look at Le Pierre covering up, and Pedraza's just letting him fly. A-list has to deal. keep a close eye. I know he's blocking some deal. of those, but some of those shots are getting through. Absolutely some of them are. Puts up the earmuffs, and Pedraza says, that's fine. I'll press the accelerator. No problem with that. And there's an uppercut that lands. The answer at all is a concern. Pedraza lands a thudding uppercut. <laughs> Pedraza's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. I said it in the beginning, taking nothing from Le Pierre, but you have to look at his record, you have to look at his experience, and you have to treat him as such. Good shot right there 
from Pedraza. You can't allow a person like Le Pierre, a fighter like Le Pierre, to gain confidence. If I hear that you're working a day job and going to the gym at night, I gotta treat you like, you, you know, you're, you're boxing in the evening and working during the day. Yeah, I gotta treat you just like this. And that's what Pedraza's doing right now. Le Pierre now trying to make some way to push off and create some offense of his own here at the end of round number two. Yeah, Pedraza might have punched himself a little bit out this round. He threw a lot of combinations. We'll update those CompuBox numbers when we come back. Active. What's up? Talked about Pedraza setting the tone. I think I counted somewhere between 30, 35 shots to the body, to the head. I'm concerned that Lay Pierre felt like it was okay to sit on the rope and take that kind of punishment. Not every shot landed, but plenty of them did. And Kenny Bayless was, was very, very close to stop him. That you know, and Kenny Bayless made the comment just before the start of this third round to Mick Lay Pierre. He's like, listen, you got to show me something at moments like that. I, it's my job to protect you. But in that second round, look at the punches for Pedraza. He was 46 of 83, 55 percent, 43 of 67 on power punches. That's just in the second round. Let's check in with Bernardo and hear what they're saying in the corner of Slick Mick. <laughs> right before Kenny Bayless told Mick Lapierre to show him something, Joan Guzman said the same thing, and Lapierre told him, Look, he hurt me to the body. And he says, Look, you can beat this guy, but you got to show me something. Joan Guzman is the trainer of Lapierre. Of course, Guzman, former junior featherweight and junior lightweight world champion. You know, when Pedraza landed those combinations, and you didn't see anything coming back from him, from Lake Pierre, you know, referee could have stepped in there and stopped that action a long time ago. He could have stepped in there. It was probably about 35 seconds of no return fire from Lake Pierre. You're Jose Pedraza. You want to test the tank of Le Pierre again. He had a great round. I know he probably has to get his win back under him and recover. But fighters speak loud. The body language speaks loud. And there's a reason Le Pierre wasn't throwing punches back. And he's got to go see what that reason is and go test him once again. Well, you can tell the stomach of, of Le Pierre it doesn't look like it's in tip top shape. You know, I don't see any ridges in his stomach. If I'm Pedraza, that's where I'm going. I'm going down to the body. Forget about the head. I'm going to hit the body. If you're late, Pierre, you got hit with a good body shot in the previous round. You got to try to recover and get yourself back in this fight. It's still early. Left hand that scored. He got hurt with that shot. Combination that comes in. He got hurt with that. He did. End of three, Pedraza. Pedraza keeps landing shots like that. Look at how he just made the jab miss of Le Pierre and came right over the top with the straight left hand and buzzed him. You saw the stanky legs right there from Le Pierre. You know, if he continues to land shots like this in this round, this fight is going to be over real soon. Trust me. Talked about Pedraza at the top of the show, showing some slippage in his last couple of fights. He's not showing any slippage right now. He's showing vintage Jose Pedraza, the one that helped him win the two world titles in two different weight classes. His Achilles heel has been inconsistent. He's been inconsistent in the past. That's not the case tonight. The problem for Lay Pierre is he's not only been hurt to the body now, as we just saw in their replay, he's now getting hurt to the head. You said, Dre, you know, that Pedraza has that willingness, you know, you got to understand people that you got to... You gotta go to a to a pretty much a dark place when you're in that ring. You know, you gotta you gotta feel like you're invincible. You gotta feel like you're the man. And, and if there's any time when you don't feel that way, you get into a fight, 
you're not going to perform at your best. And I think that's Pedraza. And I believe that Pedraza at this moment believes that he's a great fighter. And he's fighting like it tonight. I think his stepfather and trainer, Luis Espada, as well as Pedraza, they've been around the game in the amateurs a long time. They've been in the pro game a long time. They know that they don't have a lot of chances to stay in this place where they're right in line for a title shot. So they knew they had to come in here and perform tonight. And he's been off for a long time. Lots of cancellations. The coronavirus is making the most of this performance tonight. But to me, right at this moment, it seems like Pedraza's letting Lapierre Le off the hook a little bit. You know, he's moving his head very well, but he's not making making Lapierre pay with those shots. You make a fighter miss, you gotta try to make a pay. Hey! Oh my God! Come on, come on. That's right. 10 seconds. Hey. 